I didn't know how old those hairs looked, did you? <laughs> hey, well, I'm happy to see you. So, what sports do we have here? We have. Teammate is a knucklehead. 
and you had to work with that teammate towards a common goal. You've developed interpersonal skills that some folks don't develop when they're not in athletics. And so you have to carry over what makes you a good athlete to whatever you do next. That determination, that hard work, that teamwork, that understanding that there's a larger collective, that there's something more important than just what you want, all those things that make you a good team player, a good athlete, is also what we need in every other area of life to succeed, right? So whether you want to do like I did and try to be a, a doctor first and then become a lawyer, or you want to be a teacher like my mom, or you want to do whatever it is, carry over the things that have made you successful as an athlete. Because it's not easy. I know when school gets out, you could go home, watch cartoons, play video games, but that's not what you do. When school gets out, you go work out. You get ready for your next game. You're in the weight room. You're running sprints. You're at practice. You're getting yelled at. You got a game coming up where you're going to perform in that game. There's going to be people in the crowd watching you, and they're going to know if you messed up. That ability to perform under pressure, that determination and that hard work will serve you in other areas. So don't just think, oh, I'm just an athlete. Don't ever think that. Think, okay, I'm a well-rounded person, and my athletics gives me the ability to do a whole bunch of other stuff. Because there might be something that, a, a school topic or some, a job that you're approaching that's hard for you, but you've had the same lessons in sports. There's been something in your sport, I don't know what it is, there's been something that you're not as good at. For me, I could never hit a curveball in baseball. Just couldn't hit it. I loved fastballs, I hit them all day. Could never hit a curveball. So I worked at it, I worked at it. And when I got to law school and there were things that were difficult for me in law school, it was the same idea. Well, okay, I'm gonna work on my weaknesses. I make my weaknesses my strengths. So don't ever just cabin yourself off as an athlete. And a lot of, when I talk to young people, a lot of folks ask me, you know, how can I become like you? How can I become like President Obama? How can I become this and this and this? How can I reach this title or that title? And I gotta tell you, I learned early on the importance of goal setting. Don't start with the end goal of where you wanna be. That's great, it's important to have it in mind. You wanna play in the NBA, you want to you know, be mayor of Dallas, whatever it is, have that in mind but set goals along the way that you can actually reach short, medium, and long-term goals that you write down, that you know about, that you have in mind. And as you're going through life, check what you're doing against your goals. I would do that a lot. I would say, okay, is what I'm doing heading me towards my goal or away from my goal? And if it was going away from my goal, then I would say it's probably something I don't need to do. But if you don't have that goal, if you don't have that end point in mind, it, you could be kind of unmoored. You know, they say if you don't stand for anything, or stand for something, you'll, you'll fall for anything, right? You have to have something that is why you're, what you're striving for, what are you working for, something that gets you up in the morning. Make those goals, set them out, make them short, medium, long term, but don't make them about the title that you'll have, or how much money you'll have, or, or anything like that. What I try to do is, how am I going to feel about myself? How do I want others to feel about me at this stage? When I ran for Congress, my goal was obviously to win, but it was more importantly to make sure that my community understood who we were, and I wanted people to feel good about themselves and about their investment in each other, and that we were all in this together. And that way, since we did that, whether I won or lost, I won. Because we made sure that people understood that Hillcrest is a great school. YMCA is an important institution in our community. There are coaches like Coach Harris and Coach Davis who go above and beyond and do things that they don't get paid to do, but they're doing it because they care about you. And that's what makes our city great. That's what makes our area great. That's what makes our country great, is that there's something more important than just your own personal ambition. This is more important than what you want to do, that we're in this together. And athletes understand that implicitly, because you have to. Unless you're a tennis player, which some of you are, I know a wrestler or something like that, and even then, there's somebody behind you who's training you. You're part of a team that helps you along the way. We understand what it's like and how important it is to work together towards a common goal. And I gotta tell you, right now we need you more than ever. You might understand how important you are for our country. Schools like Hillcrest, with all the different backgrounds that we have here, with all the kids coming from different cultures and belief systems are so important. It's so important because 
There's a lot of forces in the world right now that are telling us how different we are from each other. Bill Press is a great example of how that's not true. That we are. Is it still there? Yeah. <laughs> understand this though. It's important that you take what you learned here at Hillcrest and that you put it into our community. That you stay involved in your community. And that you don't just go away and succeed and never come back. Understand that institutions like this, schools like this, we need you. We need you to go out there and graduate and do great and do big things. And then we need you to come back and tell the other kids about it. Make sure they understand that it's possible for them too. That's half of why I, I want to come here and talk to you so you understand that there's pathways in front of you that I took that you can follow, that some of my friends took that you can follow. Because too many times, we don't know what we can do. We don't know what's possible. So we set our goals lower. We set our sights lower. I want you to understand that you can do anything. You can do anything you want from this same foundation. There are people who pass through these hallways who've done incredible things, and you can too. But once you do that, Come back and get back to the community. Come back and get back to this school. Come back and get back to this system that gave you so much, right? Because these teachers, these coaches, they're not here because they're gonna get their name in the paper. And they're not here because they're gonna become millionaires doing this. They're here because they care about you. They care about our future. They, they think that you are the best thing that's going on in our community. And so they're willing to work longer and harder than they probably would otherwise because they believe in you. So come back and be a part of this. Be a part of Hillcrest for a long time. Don't just pass through here and forget about it. There's a long history here at this school of people who did great things and who stayed involved. That gym that's being built, some of these additions that are being made is because, in part because of some of the folks who pass through these hallways who still care about this school. We, we still care about this school. You're not just going through here alone. I've been watching you. I know some of your stories. I know some of you who have succeeded. And I'm impressed. I think it's great, but I'm not surprised because that's what Hillcrest can do. We have amazing people who come through these hallways. We have amazing people who work here in this building who are committed to you. And so don't worry about what you're going to be. And President Bobby used to say, don't worry about what you're going to be. Worry about how you're going to make people feel about you along the way. I promise you, I promise you, every step of the way people say, oh, they're a hard worker, they do the right things, they're a good person that you'll be okay in whatever field you pursue. But if you're, no matter how talented you are, no matter how far you go, if you're a selfish knucklehead, you're gonna end up on your own without people caring about you. I had teammates who were the most talented people in the world, the best athletes in the world, who are now among the saddest, most lonely people in the world because they didn't treat people along the way the way they should have. Athletics and sports, to me, it's just life as a microcosm that's shoved onto a field. You gotta perform, you have to train, you have to work together. And it's up to you in that moment. But you're part of a collective. And that's what I think is so great about being involved here. So I want to thank you for not just being students, being student athletes and being involved and, and work, doing all the hard work you're doing, all the hours of sweat, everything you put in. It's really important. It's great for our school, of course, and all that but it's great for you because that time that you're putting in, those, that effort you're putting in, you're building muscles that you don't even know you're gonna need. You're building resilience you don't even know you're gonna need. Because life is gonna knock you down sometimes. It's not, it's not always gonna be easy. It wasn't always easy for me, I promise you that. But when you know and you have that kind of North Star guiding you, you know that you have the work ethic, the determination, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. So that's what I wanted to tell you. I want you to know that no matter what your goal is, or where you want to go from here, you can do it for Hillcrest. I'm an example of it. We care about you. We're watching you. We want to make sure you succeed. We can be helpful to you. You have to reach out to us and let us know how we can help you. My phone number is on my website. You can call us anytime. This is what we're trying to do. Can we have some help with this? I promise you we'll try and help as much as we can. But understand, you're not just athletes or students, you're both. Take those lessons that make you good on the field, that make you good on the court, put them into your studies, put them into whatever you're gonna be doing next. Because like I said, at some point, 
no matter how good you are, that career is going to end. You got to be ready for the next thing. You got to be ready. So, does anybody have any questions for me about the NFL, about being in politics, about coming through Hillcrest? Or anybody? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to thank y'all for taking the time out to come by here. Congratulations on the new gym. It's going to be Wait, great. I got, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. That's good. So, you guys are going to walk way too easy with no questions. So, let's ask one question here. Okay, now you got to get in line. Okay, I'm first. No, okay, keep your hand up against your right. But I have a question. I've always wanted to know what separates, because everyone in college is amazing at what separates them from making it to the next level and staying at the next level? So, the first time I walked into an NFL practice field, I understood that everybody was better than anyone I'd ever known. Every single player at every single position was the best player I'd ever seen at that position, ever. And you know, there are 53 spots on an NFL roster. And when I was playing, they'd bring 80 people to training camp. And so that means a lot of people aren't going to make the team. And so I just had to figure out, what, how am I going to make this team? And what's, what's my niche going to be? How am I going to stick around? And there, there are players here who are objectively better than I am at what they're doing right now. And for me, it was all about attention to detail, work ethic, and being the hardest worker in the room. I mean, there's, you can't control your talent level. I mean, Coach Harris can tell you that I played with some guys who were more talented than I was, no doubt, who went to have the scholarships from the biggest teams, the biggest schools, who, I mean, just set records, who had everything at their fingertips, the most talent in the city of Dallas. When I was here at Hillcrest playing, we went 10-0 in football, we were undefeated. We had at least seven or eight guys who were Division I talents. But the reason why I was the only one who made it to the NFL out of that group was that I didn't make mistakes. I learned my playbook. I learned multiple positions. I worked harder than the people around me. I did when, I, when we worked out in the morning, I would go work out on my own in the afternoon. When everybody went to bed at night, I'd be in my playbook. Because I couldn't control my talent level. I couldn't get any bigger than I was or faster than I was. I was already working as hard as I could to be peak level on that. What I could control was my work ethic. And the thing you'll hear in the NFL over and over and over again is focus on what you can control. Because there's so much going on around you. You can be traded, you can be cut, someone else can be brought in, someone can be drafted that you can't control. The one thing you can control is how hard you work every single day, day in, day out. How you approach the next drill, the next drill, the next practice, the next practice. And for me, when I put that together, at the end of the training camp, I had outperformed people who had been there for years who had been higher draft picks than I was, who were objectively more talented than I was. But I was more valuable to the team. And so I actually think that my career, in some ways, was built on that. I wasn't supposed to have an NFL career. I was an undrafted free agent. Um, I, was, I came into a team that had 12 linebackers, we kept six. So six of the linebackers had to go. And I was one of the ones left standing. And it's because of my work ethic. And it started here at Hillcrest, it really did. And Coach Harris can tell you, I wasn't, as I said, I wasn't the most talented here, but I worked at it, I worked at it, and I worked at it. And that carried over to my law school, it carried over to the way I ran for Congress, it carried over to what I'm doing now, is that I might not be the smartest person in the room, I might not know as much as whoever's around me, I might not, you know, I don't know, be the best looking or whatever it might be, but I'm gonna outwork you, and that's how I'm gonna beat you that when you're resting, I'll be working. When you're doing something else, I'll be prepared. And if you do that in life, no matter what area it is, athletics, your job, your family, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. You can control that. No one can make you work harder or less hard. Coaches try, they'll encourage you, they'll say, hey, you know, if you really work on this, you could go somewhere, but it's still up to you in the end. And I know there's some folks here who have a chance to go on and play at higher levels and all that. I'll tell you this, however good you are now, you're running to folks who are better than you. And you know, how are you gonna react? When you walk onto the court, 
and they're better than you on the first day, but you have six weeks, two months, a year to prove yourself, how are you gonna react? Because some people go into a shell and say, oh, I was always the best, and now I don't know about this. I don't like being challenged. I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna back off. But some people rise to the challenge. You know, you watch the results on the TV of all these great athletes, we all do. You know, every night in the NBA, we see Steph Curry hitting three-pointer after three-pointer after three-pointer. We don't see the thousands and tens of thousands of shots that he put up so he got that stroke down, right? He's not supposed to be who he is. He's just a six foot two guy who's not really that fast and can barely dunk. But he's, now he's the greatest three point shooter in NBA history. And that's what you can control. So that's what I always try to tell young athletes, right? Don't, you know, you have a baseline of talent that's God given that you can't do anything about. That's, that's where you were set. You can improve it as much as possible, but there's gonna be a ceiling. But what you, no one can do is outwork you if you put your mind to it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, just blowing smoke, I'm telling you the truth. The reason why I was an NFL player was because I outworked the players around me. Players who were more talented than me, who were bigger than me, who were faster than me, who had been paid more money than I had been, who had been drafted ahead of me. I still beat them out. So at the end of the day, they say, oh, well, we can't get rid of, rid of all right. He's, he's ugly and he's slow, but he knows everything. And you know, we can put him anywhere. And that's what you can control. And that's why, you know, I mean, Hillcrest is, a, is to me, a school that's perfect for that. We have to have a blue collar work ethic. We have to understand that we don't have everything handed to us. We're not walking in with all the fancy gear. We don't have you know, private trainers who are teaching us every single day, every single step. But what we have is the ability to grind it out. I was seeing you know, the new weight room you're gonna have, that's great, I'm glad you have a new weight room. Coach Harris tell you, when I was here, we just picked up whatever was heavy. You know, just, <laughs> how many times did we pick it up? We picked up his car once. You don't want to, <laughs> he had a blue VW, we picked it up. I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's how we were, that was our attitude. Was we picked up whatever was in, we ran as much as we could. We did everything we could. That's, that's why we ended up being the best team in Dallas, was because of that hard work. But you can control that. You know, nobody can, can control how hard you work. If you put that in, it's amazing what you'll get out.